hey there and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing part two of the easy speed run. We have ten problems again and we're going to go through them. And uh, I'll go over the time and space complexity for all of these after I'm done. So let's start. So given a pattern, find if s follows the same pattern, if there's a bijection. Okay, so what you got to do for problems like this is just have two dictionaries. So just call left equals this. And then we can just have a d make them default dict string. So dict string. So left will be for the right and then this will be this and then I also need to break down the right word into a list. So s equals s dot split. Just break that down and then four and these should be so if they're not the same length, it's already false, so one else, it's not equal, one, pattern, turn, false, then for i, one, s, if, actually I think I do want to make these, uh, this instead. So then I need to check both sides. So if s dot or if s dot i not in um, I think. So this needs to not be in pattern. Yeah. Or no, it's the other way around. Okay, okay. So if pattern dot i not in left then we need to do that so pattern or left pattern i equals and then this needs to be s i believe else if pattern or so this does not equal return false and then same thing the other way so if si not in right right si is pattern i and then we need to see if it's already matched uh, same thing if right S I does not equal pattern. So for a bijection you'd have matching on both sides, so return false. And then once you're done, return true. Okay. Alright, next one. Next one we're willing to give it a string text. You want to use a character of text to form the instances. Okay, so we can just have a counter once again, so counts. Counter text. Now we just need to do return the minimum of all of these. So it's going to be count B. Uh, yeah, the letter B. So then, so for the word balloons, let's just write this out just to double check. So, so we have one B, we have one A. 1a, then l, we have two l's. Okay, but we need two, so we are going to divide it by two. And then o, same thing. Divide it by two. n, one, so counts. And so if any one of these is zero, it's going to be zero. Counts n and counts uh, s. Okay, it should be that. Uh, balloons. Not no, oops. Ooh. Output zero expected one. Interesting. So let's print this counts just to. 
Let's see if maybe I wrote some letter wrong or something. Okay, so L is right, O, N. Okay, so let's see. But what? If, okay, so which one is right? So this is zero, I see. Okay. Counts L. Okay, so let's take a look. Counter. B is one. Counts A. That's right. Counts L. Yep. Counts zero. Or o. Yep. N's one. S. Oh, I wanted balloon, not balloons. Okay. There we go. Okay. So submit that. Okay, next one. Find all the numbers appeared. Given a number and array, return all the integers that do not appear in nums. Okay. So one. Okay. So what we can do here is we can have like a really bad solution, but uh, I think the optimal solution would just be not that far either. So let's just do that. So for i range length nums. And then what we need to do is we need to add some number. So let's just call that uh, big num or something. Goes 10, uh, what's the biggest number we have? So let's just make this 10 to the 7th or something. And then we need to add to every index we need to add. So this would go to three and so on. So if I just say temp equals nums i, if temp is greater than 10 to the fifth, uh, temp minus equals big num. And then we can go nums if nums temp is the same thing, I think, here. So if less than big num, yeah, num nums temp plus equals big. Um, and this temp needs to be zero index, I think, so it's like this. So I'll just print these just to make sure real fast. Okay, so we do have zero, one, two, three. So we have index four and index five. So whatever index doesn't have this big num is going to be our output array. So school is this. Four, If nums i is less than big num, there's dot append i plus one, I believe, and then it's your turn around here. Okay. Alright. Cool. Arrange some query. You're given an integer array, handle multiple queries, calculate the sum of the elements between left and right inclusive. Okay. Analyze. Okay. So, an array, zero, two. Okay, so we're just, I see. Now, inclusive, sum of the elements, and so we're never changing these. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make a prefix sums. So this is pretty straightforward as well. Yeah, so so it's just going to be this for num and nums. And then we need some kind of total. So you could do it another way where you manually go through, but this should be the optimal solution. So for num and nums, prefix or total plus equals num, and then prefix sums. dot pend total okay we we didn't even need this total but that's fine okay and then just the range of left and right should be return prefix sums so 
it's going to be right for sure, and then there's going to be some minus thing. Sums. Hmm. Okay, so maybe I want prefix sums to be, let's see, because LF can be zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So actually, we can just have an easy check here. So if left equals zero, return prefix sums right, which would be the total thing. If left, if, if it's including else, return prefix sums right minus prefix sums. And this index would be left minus one because we're including left. Okay. Let's see. Now, right. Uh, cool. Well, we could have done alternatively is put a zero in at the prefix sums. I'll talk about this one um, in the future because I think that's a good one. So I'll come back to that and explain it. Okay, pivot index, number restricted to the left is, just make sure, so the index is the left edge, then the left sum is zero, this also applies, return the leftmost pivot index, if nothing equals, okay, interesting. The pivot index is the index where the sum of the numbers strictly to the left is Okay, is equal to the sum of the numbers strictly to the right. Okay, so three, they'd be eight. All oh, right, pivot index. This is the actual index. So 11, 11. Okay, I see. So it, okay. So at first I need some kind of sum. So total equals sum nums. Now I just have a left and a right total. So left total equals zero. Right total equals um, just say I think this is the total for now. Okay, so for num and nums, I need an index. So so what I need to do is I need to subtract it from the right total. Yeah, so right total minus equals i or nums i. If left total equals right total, return i. And then I need to add it to the left at the end, and I think that's it. So left total plus equals nums i. And then if there's no solution, just return minus 1. Okay. Okay, so that's that. Okay, next greater element, you're given this thing to uh, blah, 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 determine the next greater element. Okay. If there's no return and array, like nums1, so nums2, is the first greater element that is to the right of x in the same array. Okay, so the next greater element, let's see. So 4 is underlined, there is no next greater element. Okay, why am I? And nums1 is a subset of nums2, I see. For each index. Oh, okay, so I can literally just go through these if I wanted to. Yeah. Are the numbers unique? Yeah. Okay, so I guess. Uh, so they want a. I guess we could do the optimal solution. We could take some time and do that. So. Num's length, num's two length solution. So they want a solution that we only iterate through these once. Um, okay. So we can't sort. X squared elements this, okay. So what we could do is we could 
figure out the indices of all of these in here. So we could figure out the indices of all of these, and then we could also use a stack to do the next greater element thing. Um, yeah. And then we can have an next greater element. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's do that. So we need the location. So um, for i in the range numbs. There is this length. Nums two. Something kind of dictionary, so locations. I equals I, so that's gonna be the index. Then we need this next greater element thing, so next greater equals, let's just make it negative one times length of nums two. So I'll go over the solution as well and go back. And then we need to stack. Okay. And then I think that's it there. Um, and then we're just gonna need to keep pushing, so while, or I think this. Yeah, so we probably need to do this again. Loop this again. So we could have technically done it here. I guess let's just do that. So put this down here. Um, and then while stack and nums2 i is greater then stack minus one. So we'll just say this is the number and then, or say this. Yeah, it's fine. Then number, or index number equals stack dot pop. And then next greater index equals, this is technically not needed, next greater index equals 2i, k, we append it to that, so then stack dot append uh, the index, so i, 2i, something like that. Okay, and then for our last part, for, um, oh, we need a res, right? So, resulting array, so for num in nums one, we need to get the index, so index equals, or, or we could just, we don't even need that, so we can just do res.pend uh, next greater and then locations num so that'll be that and I think that should be good and return I might have had an error here but I think it might work okay and I'll go over this one because that's definitely the optimal solution is definitely not an easy problem. Okay, given an array of num size and, and return the majority element, return the majority element that returns um o of n times. Okay, so this is another tricky one where it's easy to do in uh just get it done. So let's try to do the optimal solution, I guess. So the optimal solution is we pretty much have a number, and then if it appears more than and over two times, we can just keep incrementing the count of the number, and any time the the number the count of the number gets below zero, that we try another element. So let's just say uh, number equals, and let's just have something else. So that's not in this array. So let's just make a negative one, and the num count equals zero. And for num and nums. If num does not equal number, num count minus equals one. If num count is less than zero, that means that we're gonna try this number. So then number equals num. 
um, count equals one. Okay, and if else, uh, just increment the num count. Let me just return the number here. So go over that one as well. Uh, oh, what's going on? It's stupid. So that should be the. Um, most efficient solution, but we'll go over it. Okay. Um, so can place flowers. You have a long flower bed in which some plants, plants are plotted. However, flowers can be planted in adjacent plots. Given an injure, return true if new flowers can be planted in the flower bed. Okay. And how many flowers do we need? So we need to only, okay, and all right. So what we need to do here is we need to just be greedy and we need to try to plant a flower any place we can right away and then we move on. So range line flower bed. And so how do we know if we can plant a flower? Well, let's think about it. So we can plant a flower if there is no flower next to it already. So if the numbers on both sides are zeros we can plant, right? So if, uh, also I think what we want to do probably to make sure we don't hit any errors is we can put a zero on both sides. Yeah, yeah, so let's do that. So let's just say flower bed equals, and this, this shouldn't increase complexity, so zero plus and then we can get rid of all the like random out of bounds so then we have to go to one start at one and this and then the last thing we have to try to plant that is this okay so if I have minus one zero and flower plus one equals zero. Then we can plant, so we do that. So uh, we plant it, and then we do n minus equals one. And then here we can just have this check of if n equals zero, turn true. We can also have it here. Okay, it's exactly true. Equals two. Okay, so let's see. So for i, flower red i minus one. So we're gonna start here. We can't. Oh right, we need one more thing. So we we need to see if we already planted. So and i equals zero. There we go. Oh, so output false. Okay, so that's yeah. Uh, so if n equals zero, return true. So I guess I know what happened. Uh, this becomes negative. So, or we don't even need that actually. We can just do if n is less than or equal to zero. There we go. Okay, next one. Isomorphic strings, given two strings, two strings are, if all occurrences must be replaced, no two characters. So this is the same as we had in some other problems where we just have a dictionary for both. So, and then we just make sure that they're the same. So, oh, by the way, we can also do um, if when s does not equal when t this just has to be false. So then we do for i range one s if s i in left 
and SI does not equal TI. So we can return false here. Same thing for the other case. Uh, actually, let's just break this down. Yeah, let's break this down. So if, because we want to put it in otherwise, so K else SI equals TI. And same thing for the other side. So if TI in right. Just, if TI does not equal SI, return false. Same. And then TI equals. Oh, so actually, I did this a little wrong, so this needs to be left. And then the same thing for the other one. So, if SI left. No, oh, oops. Left. Okay, if TI is in right. Right, and left, right. So, same thing. And then once we go through the whole thing, then we can return true here. Okay, one to go. Pascal's triangle, okay. Uh, in Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers above it, as it's shown. Okay. Given an integer num rows, return the first num rows. Okay. So I think this is going to be probably recursive or something. Um, Okay, so I might cut out a second. Okay, so we're going to return the first num rows, and the recursive case is that when we have so the the first and last are always one, but then the middle ones are the sum of so if this is one, then it's the sum of the previous one minus one and the previous one itself. So this is like row four one is equal to row three zero and row three one, and then row four two is going to be equal to or three zero or three one and or three two okay so let's just do a recursive function here so Pascal and then we're gonna have a row right so if row what's gonna be the base case here I think the base case is do we need a column Probably. Well, do we need a column, actually? I think so. Yeah. So it's going to be a recursive function, and I think we just, this is going to be the helper function that we do to do row by row by row by row. Yeah, and then this is going to give you something. So we also want probably the the best solution is going to have a visited. So something like this. So if row equals... So let's see how these rows go. Row is 1, let's say. Return 1. Or row equals 1 or column... Or do we want to do? Yeah, let's just do uh, number. Let's just do. Let's just do zero indexed. So if row equals zero, return one. Or column equals zero. Or so if we're on row zero, column. So that's gonna be fine. Okay, so here's row zero, column one. Or sorry, row one, column one. Row two, column two. Row three, column. Okay. So if row equals column. Column. Return one. Okay, and then also if it's in our visited, 
So if column and visited turn visited no column otherwise return the sum of row minus one uh, we need to call this helper function so pascals row minus one column minus one plus and this is row minus one column okay so that should be the pascals and then we just do this res thing here so for row in num rows or range uh, num rows then we're gonna say um, some kind of current row is cur equals this and then for column in range so how many columns does each row have well row 1 or row 0 has one column row 1 has two columns and so on so the column is going to be the row that we're at plus 1 I believe yeah so row so if we want plus 1 I think we want plus 1 like this so let's see what this would happen so if this is row 0 this would go to 1 that would be 0 if this was row 1 it would go it would be in range 2 0 yeah I think this is good so just cur dot pend and then here we just use this pascals thing pascals row column then we just do res dot pend cur I don't think we need a cur dot copy if we make a new one but let's just okay so return res okay uh, let's see what we got here if row equals zero or call oh. okay hopefully work oh we have a recursive uh, thing problem so there's probably some kind of uh yeah there's probably I'm guessing some kind of a infinite recursion maybe well let's just make sure oh yeah I know what we're doing wrong already I think yes so instead of this return we need to actually put it into our memorization array so visited okay there we go and then now we can return it let's try it okay so let's go over some of the ones that weren't super easy so word pattern is pretty straightforward so this word pattern and this so when you have this this bijection you have to uh, let's do this okay so if you have ABC or actually there we go so you have word ABC DEF in order for these things to have a bijection every single character in this top thing has to match to this and every single character has to match this so when we go through this word we say a has to match to D so then we when we encounter another a and it doesn't match to D it's false and then the same thing with this D it has to match to a so when we encounter another D and it doesn't match to a it's false so there has to be a one-to-one -one thing so that's why we have this dictionary so it's pretty straightforward okay, let's go to the next one this balloons is also pretty straightforward so we have a counter of every letter and we just take the min count of every single letter and these L's there's two of them so and these O's there's two of them so we need double so we just divide by two Okay, find all the numbers that's appeared in an array. This is also straightforward. So if we treat these numbers as indices, there's going to be one index that isn't in here. If, if instead of 1 to n, it's 0 to n minus 1, there's going to be one index that isn't in here. There's one duplicate. And so what we could do is we can just add a huge number to all of these as we go through them. And then whatever index doesn't have the huge number added to it is the index we never visited. 
So like for four, we would go to, this would be minus one, so we'd go to index three. So one, two, three, we'd add a huge number here and we'd keep doing that. And then anytime we encounter a huge number uh, in our first iteration, we just say we want to subtract the huge number to get the real number that it is. You could, you can make these negatives, but then the problem with making these negatives is if some of these numbers are zero, you can't make zero negative, so then you'll run into some issues. Okay, so range sum query immutable. Yeah, so this is a good one to go over it here. So I think the easy solution would literally be just if you have numbers like this and you have, so you can just store the array actually and then you have a left and a right pointer and you can just do a sum of this of this part of the list. But the problem is you're doing repeated work. So like if you get this, then you need to do a sum. And then if you get this, let's say, then you need to do a sum and so on. And so what you can do is, this is where prefixes come in handy. And so if you, or the prefix sum, so let's say you have this. Instead of storing this, we just store the sum up to that point. And because all of these, this int sum is going to be contiguous, it's going to be a guaranteed, like, some part of the array that's not, it's not going to be chunks, that we could do it. And the way it works is basically we just have a running total and we add it up. So this would be one, this would be the running total, three, six, ten. 15. And now we know that if we want the sum here, let's say, we know this is the sum of every number up to this. And so if we want the sum of like this is the left and this is the right, what we can do is we can take the sum of up to the right. So let's just, so if this is the left and this is the right, let's say, we can take the sum up to the right and we can subtract the sum. So this is including L. So we want the sum up to the right and we subtract the sum that's to the left of the L, which is just two numbers. So it's this number minus this number and so on. And so that's why these prefixes are good because we're able to do sums in big O one time as opposed to getting sums of chunks. Okay, so that's that one. Let's go to the next one. Find pivot index is pretty straightforward. You just get a total sum and then you just have a left and a right array. And as you're going through, you subtract from the left, from the right and add to the left and see if they're equal. Next greater element. Yeah, so this one, I think we may have done a problem like this, but so first what we need to do is we actually need to get the index of each one of these numbers. So that way when we have like a four here, we can do a constant lookup time. So we can go through this n nums two once and we can say like if we have this one, three, four, two, we can we can say like, okay, all these numbers are unique. So the index of one is zero and so on. So when we have these numbers, we can look them up right away with a dictionary. And then, uh, and then to get the next greater element, all we did, I think we actually literally had a problem that did this one. So actually, I think I'm not going to explain this one because I think I actually have a YouTube video for this one. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so the majority element. So there's the easy solution is just do a, do a count for all of these and then whichever one has the biggest count wins. But the big O of one time solution with no extra space is actually because one number is, it's telling you it's appearing more than half the time. What you can actually do is you can just pick a candidate. So like, let's say we have this two, two, one, 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 two, two. We just pick a candidate and we have our initial candidate. That's something that's not in the list. So we just had it's one and then just count as zero. So we have a candidate and a count. So let's just call canned and a count. And then we go through this entire list one at a time. And if we reach a number that wasn't our candidate, so like we're here, that wasn't our candidate. And then, so that, so that means we decrement the count. So we decrement the count, the count's minus one. And anytime the count's minus one, we pick the current candidate we're at. So now we pick this two. So this candidate, uh, let's just let's just call the candidate N and then the count C just to make it easier. So N equals two, count equals one. We go to this next one, N equals two. Now it's, we reach the same one, so we increment the count. Then we have, so we reach a one, so we subtract. So the count is one, we reach another one, count is zero. We reach this last one, count is negative one. So now we make one the candidate so n is one, count is one, then we reach this two, count is zero, reach this two, and now this count is negative one, so we make two the candidate. And basically by doing this candidate thing and decreasing every time we reach something new, we're guaranteed to end up with the right thing at the end because that number should be more than half of, this will only work if that number is more than half of the array. So that's the optimal solution for that problem. Uh, so this, the, but that definitely wouldn't be an easy, that would be like a medium, you have to know the trick. So. This place, place flowers is also pretty straightforward. All we're doing is just placing a flower as soon as we can. So we're being greedy. Anytime we have an open spot, we place. So like here we'd place and then we're done. 
here we try to place and then we can't place anywhere else so we're done so this is just a greedy solution place the flower as soon as possible okay isomorphic strings this is the same thing as uh one of these earlier ones this word pattern it's the same exact thing we just check the left and the right and then pascal's triangle is you just have a recursive method so if you have like this this is just recursive where if you're if whatever row you're on if the column equals one or if the column equals a row right so this is this is row zero this is row one and this is column zero column one so if the if the column equals zero or if the column equals the row that means we're on this outer border so then it's one otherwise like let's say we're at this point here so this is row one two three four column two the recursive case is this is the sum of this plus this so if this is column two, then this is the previous row at the at one column less. So right, this is column one, this is column two. So the recursive case is this right here. It's row one, column minus one plus row one, minus one, column one. And now the other thing is I made this memorization dictionary because you're going to be doing a lot of repeated work, right? So when you get this, you're going to calculate these. But then if you get this one, you're going to calculate this again and calculate these again. And so you're making sure not to calculate the same number a billion times. And so that made it run faster. Let's do the time and space complexity for all these real fast. And then that's everything for this problem. So time here is we go through every single word and we go. So it's just going to be S plus T. We go through every single one and then, yeah, in space. Uh, it's just going to be a length of the shorter word. So actually, it's going to be length s plus st as well, because we do need to store all of these. So it's going to be s plus t as well. OK, number of balloons. So we have a counter for balloons. So this is just time. We need to go through the entire word. So length text. Uh, we go of length text. And then space. We made, a, we made a counter dictionary, so it's going to be 26 times a number. So this is going to be constant time because there's 26 letters and they have a number, so constant time. Uh, all the numbers appeared in an array. It's really straightforward. So time is going to be O of N, whatever the length of the list. We're just iterating through it uh, twice. And then space is big O of 1. So it's straightforward. Range some query we made an array that's equal to nums and we so for our init uh, our init is going to be big O of n but then the sum range is going to be big O of 1 and then for our space if we're going to have big O of n in the init and then our sum range is going to be big O of 1 as well because we just declared this prefixes and that's how we used uh, the pivot index we didn't, so once again, for, for most of these easy ones, the, the time and complexity should be pretty easy because, or pretty small, because you don't have to get the optimal solution. So time is big O of n. We go through our entire array one time. And then space is big O of 1. We didn't make any extra variables. Next rated element, I'm not going to do this one because I have a video for that. And then majority element. So the optimal solution will be time big O of n space big O of 1. But if you wanted to do just a counter, then, then you'd have space big O of 26. Well, that would technically be still big O of 1 because it'd be 26 times a number. So can place flowers. We didn't initialize anything in same. So we just went through this one time. Space big O of 1. Isomorphic strings, we already did the similar one, so we're going to skip that. And then Pascal's triangle. So our time is going to be, we're going to go through each row and we're going to go through each column. So it's actually going to be whatever row times the column is. Technically, they do get smaller, but it's going to be like row times columns. And then our space is going to be the same thing, row times columns because we made this visited and this visited can technically hold any triangle in it so that's going to be that i think it yeah i think it grows 
it doesn't grow uh it's not like our logarithmic like it keeps growing so i think this should would be something like that okay so sorry this was kind of a long video and we'll do the next easy speed run uh in a few days probably so thanks for watching and like and subscribe if you like this uh content